Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have eight all new beach DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. Now I put out a survey and you guys asked for more beach DIY. So that is what we're gonna do today. Now I picked up a whole bunch of these little wooden fish from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree and I haven't really done much with them. I did make the one with like the scales and like they're all swimming and they're all like on um, little dowels, but I think that's the only craft I've done with them. So I thought we could try something else. Using some of these fun burlaps from the Dollar Tree, I got an idea from one of y'all on my Facebook group. Let me find out who that was. That was Debbie. I don't know if she wants me to say her last name, but thank you, Debbie, for this idea. Yours turned out really cute. I don't know if mine turned out as good as yours, but we'll see. <laughs> now I'm gonna start with the white burlap. Um, I tried giving it a starch and an iron to kind of get rid of some of those wrinkles. And I was also hoping to stiffen it a little bit. I want to cover the head and the tails of my fish with the white. Um, I'm going to make all the fish different since I have all that variety of burlap, but I think I'm going to make the heads and tails all the same. So I just kind of lay the tail on top of it and kind of sketch that out with a Sharpie so I'll know where to cut. And then I'll fold that a couple times. That way I can cut out all three at once. Now, when you cut this burlap, you do get a lot of fraying and I really had planned to uh, Mod Podge this first and let it dry. A lot of you guys have told me that's a great way to keep it from fraying. I kind of do a little hack. Um, it might've turned out perfect if I would have done it the other way, but I was kind of on a time crunch. So I didn't have time to do that, but um, you might want to do that for yours. <laughs> but I got three little tails. Now I'm going to do three little heads. I like the rope on there that was already on there. It was just kind of in the way. That's just why I disconnected it from one side, but kind of left it still on there. So I'm going to do the same thing. I just drew out the head and I'm just going to cut out three copies of it. I was thinking these cuts were not going to be too intricate. So hopefully fraying will be at a minimum. And so that looks pretty good. So we have three little heads. As you can see, one was already trying to fray a little bit there, but I'll show you what I do to try to reduce that from happening. And I think those are good to go. So the other trick I've been told is just to use Mod Podge on their edges and let that dry. So I just take a tiny paintbrush from the Dollar Tree and I just paint Mod Podge all along all my edges. Just an extra step. Didn't really want to do it, but you know what? I also didn't want them fraying. And so anytime you're working with this stuff, you're going to kind of be at that risk. So that was my quick little Mod Podge hack, and it seemed to do the trick. Aside from the one that was already trying to fray from immediately being cut. <laughs> So now is time to start putting these together. I want to do three of the wood fish and I want to put them all together to do like a large wall hanging for my wall. I thought that'd be really cute to have like instead of like a school, it's going to be they're going to be kind of hanging fish. So I just do Mod Podge on the head of our fish and then just simply glue on the white burlap. I love that white burlap. I guess it was specific for the shore living line. I don't know if they're going to have that all the time, but every time I see any of this burlap, I try to pick it up because um, you can't have enough burlap. I craft with it all of the time. I do go over the top of all of the burlap with more Mod Podge to make sure it is secure. And as long as you use a fairly thin coat, you don't have to worry about any of that showing in the end because it will dry clear. So I'm gonna go ahead, do all of the heads and all of the tails, and then we can decorate the little fish bodies. 
The inspiration piece that I'm using from our Facebook group, if you haven't joined, you should. Everybody is so creative. She did the fish scales for the body and then blue burlap for the head and the tail. I don't know if she had blue burlap or if she painted it, but it looks beautiful. But I don't have like a turquoise blue um, burlap. I wish I did. Maybe I need some. Okay, so for the body, I had scrap pieces of all of these, so I didn't even have to open new rolls. I've had some of y'all call me out for not cutting this and using it, um, like using my scraps. I always use my scraps, y'all. I'm a crafter. So I kind of figured out where I would need to cut for the seam for the head and the tail, and then just carefully cut that out, hopefully about the same size as the body and that looks pretty good I like the fish scales and look at this I remember to put my fish scales the, the right way I totally screwed that up on my mermaid tail okay for the next one I know starfish is not something that you would think of being on the side of a fish but hey the colors match and I think it would be really fun just to have some stars or starfish on a fish because when you're crafting you can make stuff however they want to you know you want them to be um, you can be creative uh, somebody was saying that my palm tree was not realistic in the last one because the shells would not be there in a palm tree. And I'm like, it is art. <laughs> oh my goodness. Some people can't think outside the box. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with the polka dot. That way we can keep that like brown and turquoise trim. And so I think this one's really cute too. This is one I picked up this spring at Dollar Tree. And I love all the different burlaps they have. So I have three fish bodies now. I just used that first one for reference to cutting out the other two. And it was a pretty easy shape to do. So I think that's going to work. But I don't want it to fray. So just like last time, I'm going to go around all the edges. And I do do this on the back just in case um, you can see it in the end. Um, I don't want it to look different from any of the other burlap and seal all of those edges. Just an extra step, but hopefully it did help. <laughs> I did have to trim them in the end, but very minimally, so maybe it did work. Um, so now we can start Mod Podging these on our fish. So here's our little polka dot fish. I'm gonna trim that one down a little bit so it doesn't overlap too much. I am going to cover like the seams in between the head the body and the tail, um, the tail when I'm going to use that existing rope, but I'll show you what I use for the headwind too. And here's our little starfish. <laughs> and Mod Podge that down, Mod Podge over the top. And here is our like kind of more traditional fish with the fish scales. I love that. That might be one of my favorites. Oh, I don't know. I love the starfish one too. <laughs> And if you guys haven't seen my B tier trade that I just did recently, they have some really cute B burlap too. I love it. Okay, so they're partially dry, dry enough for me to trim them up. And that's when I'm gonna go around all of the edges of my fish with a super sharp pair of scissors and carefully cut off any um, fraying or anything like that, clean them up a little bit. Now I did not have rope that was the same as the rope on the tail. All I had was this from Walmart, which is thinner, or the thicker rope from Dollar Tree. And I really kind of, if I was gonna use rope on both, I kind of wanted them to match. I also tried switching it up to white, like maybe with this macrame rope from the Dollar Tree. I didn't think that was large enough either. And so I was thinking, what else could I use? And I thought, what about some of this burlap trim from the Dollar Tree? It's gonna be the same color as the rope and it's slightly decorative and fun, right? So that's what I decided to go with. So I'm gonna cut a piece of that and staple that on each one. But first I gotta secure the ropes that we loosened earlier so that we could decorate these. So I am just stapling them back in to the top of the fish and then we can attach our little burlap trim. I love this stuff. I got this at the Crafter Square. Um, you could also use like the burlap ribbon that is on a roll. They have some really cute designs on that as well. One thing I like about this is that it's just straight like burlap color. It doesn't have any of the white in it. 
and I think it looks really fun on these fish. So I am just stapling that to the back and just wrapping it right around the seam, easy peasy. And we have our fish all decorated. Now I wanted to string them together into a sign. Now I don't want them like all swimming the same direction. So we'll have the middle fish like swimming in the opposite direction. So I just flip them all over, try to make sure that they're kind of evenly spaced. Then I'm just gonna knot this burlap um, jute rope from Walmart, staple that in the back of my fish, line it up, head to tail there, and I'm gonna use my staple gun and just staple through these fish and staple these all on. Now, the more staples you use, the better um, to get these to hang straight. You're gonna want to staple at the top and the bottom of the fish. I did have to go back and uh, maybe add a few staples at the end because I didn't want any of my fish to kind of hang out. I wanted them all to hang um, close against the wall. It's hard for me to see with my staple gun because I don't want to get my big head in y'all's way, but <laughs> sometimes I miss. <laughs> And so then I knot the bottom one and staple that to it. And there it is. Isn't that a fun DIY? Thank you so much for that idea. Um, Debbie, yours turned out brilliant, but mine turned out pretty cute too. What do you think? And this is how they look hanging. I'm not sure what where I'm going to put these. They're so cute though. I'm sure I'll find somewhere in my coastal home for these. And here it looks from a distance. So fun. Okay, one of y'all asked me on my last video that you wanted a seahorse DIY that was colorful and more realistic. And you know, your girl's always up for a challenge. And so that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to use one of these Dollar Tree boards. I wanted a wood one, but you know, with Dollar Tree, you kind of go with what you can find. And I could only find the black one. So we're going to kind of make it look wood. I'm going to mix Antique Wax by Waverly with some ivory paint. It gives you the perfect color for driftwood. And then we are just going to distress the sign all over. This is going to be like the background sign for our realistic seahorse. And we're also going to use some of that shore living greenery that I showed you guys. I found a fresh case at my Dollar Tree the other day. It was so exciting. <laughs> one of my viewers that lives locally was asking me if the stores had put any out. And I'm like, well, this one, of course, but I bought all the cute ones because I was so excited because I do not think I picked up enough of those when I first saw them. They went fast. And then I just use straight Antique Wax by Waverly and distress over the top of that. Then I just blend it all with a baby wipe. And it gives me like a really fun, um, you know, distressed driftwood look. Okay, so here is our little seahorse. This is from the Shore Living line. You could always do this with the one um, with the paper on it. Um, you would have to clean that up a little bit. I love the plain wood. Whenever I can get the plain wood ones, that is always going to be my preference. So we're going to do the back just so I don't have to deal with the design that was on there. Just remove the tag and I just want to stain this. So I'm going all over with a light coat of Caribbean blue. Um, just a beautiful color. And then I wipe off all the excess with a baby wipe and it leaves me with a light blue stain where you can still kind of see the wood grain through there. Now this was the tough part. So I need a fine tip. So I am using my like fine tip, like Sure Bonder. Um, hot glue gun and I am just drawing a line. I filled in the hole at the top and I'm just going down alongside the body, kind of ignoring the fin all the way to the tip. Because the request was for a realistic um, seahorse and I was like, oh man, they're so detailed. My son takes care of these, he feeds these at the local aquarium and I love, I love seahorses, they're so fun. So I do another line straight down the middle, and then another line on the front of the seahorse. Kind of ignoring the head right now because the head has a different design. So pretty easy, just three lines down, just kind of follow the contour. And then you need to start doing like the straight lines across. 
So I'm just kind of estimating and just, the only tricky part is when you're kind of going over the bump that's already there and just kind of pulling that straight across from one side to the other. They have like this like kind of like bony, um, kind of like almost like an exoskeleton skin. It's really strange. And then I'm just gonna keep going all the way around the, ta the tail, just going around. And as you can see for that back fin there, I did like kind of make it look like a fin by adding some more stripes there. Now for the head, I was kind of looking at a C4 horse. They kind of have like a little wavy fin right here. Don't know what that's called. <laughs> so I just draw that on and some lines and a dot for an eye. And then kind of some more lines here on their head. And then I thought maybe just like a partial outline for its head with some more hot glue. Now, if you get any string from your hot glue, a heat gun works great to get rid of any of the strings because I am gonna paint and distress this more. And if I don't do that now, then you'll be able to see those strings when I paint it. But this is the detail. So what do you guys think? Does it look realistic? I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? My son, who is the seahorse expert approved, so I think I did okay. <laughs> Now I am going to kind of distress that hot glue now that it's setting up. Um, and I use a makeup sponge and some just some ivory acrylic. And I'm lightly dragging that over the hot glue that we added to that to bring out all that beautiful detail that we put on there because otherwise it's just gonna be clear. I guess, you know, they have like colored hot glues. I guess you could always use like a white hot glue as well. Maybe I need to get some of those. And I just drag it all over all the detail. If I get some on the blue starfish, it's fine. I could always go back here with a baby wipe and kind of wipe it off if I thought I went a little too heavy on the distressing. But you know, I love a good ivory distressing. So a little bit of that is gonna totally be my style. So I've got the detail seahorse and I've got, it's colorful, it's blue. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this will be what they were looking for. And I just kind of touch it up here and there. I find that I didn't want to wipe off too much of the white on the detailing. Um, and if I did, I just kind of go back with that makeup sponge and just tap it lightly. Because I think that really helps bring out the detail on that. So there he is. I do add a little bit more distressing to him in a minute but we're gonna go ahead and start putting this together. Now the sign is way longer than my little seahorse, but that's okay, we're gonna fill it all in. So I'm gonna use some twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna try stringing that from the back, tie a knot in front. I always like to do my hangers from Dollar Tree like that, I find they hang better and do the same thing on the other side. Now we can start putting this together. The driftwood, the faux driftwood, I think turned out great. And so I'm just going to hot glue our little seahorse on. So cute. Now, if you can't find any of the seahorses or you didn't pick any up when they had them in your store, I guess you could always kind of draw a silhouette of a seahorse on the existing sign. Um, you could always print one out if you needed like, a, cause it is a weird shape. Um, and kind of draw that on, you could probably get kind of the same effect. Now, this is the Shore Living Greenery that I was so excited to find. These are the ones with the ivory um, seahorses, and I love that. I'm not a big fan of the color of the greenery in that one, but I thought it would work well for this project, the kind of browns and greens, right? But I took it all apart so I could put it all exactly where I want it and arrange it like that. So I have all this room down here to decorate. I kind of want to make it look like a habitat for a seahorse and the greenery is perfect. So I just hot glue these down. I'm just kind of scattering them out. Some of them are a little bit too long, but I can always go back and trim those up later. And I pretty much use all of it from those two um, shore living picks. I can't believe I found a fresh box of those. Um, that's why you kind of have to keep checking. I know Shore Living is sold out everywhere, but you never know when they forgot to put a box out, right? So the seahorse has wire wrapped around its tail already. So I'm just gonna use that, twist it around some of that greenery 
and he can be attached to the seaweed just like they are in real life. They are not great swimmers. That is why they hold on to seaweed like that with their tails. So we'll do one over here. He's looking super cute. And here is the other one. And I'll just wire that around some of that greenery too. And I'll go back and kind of cover up um, all the hot glue and mess down here at the bottom. But I want to use lots of hot glue here to make sure that it's secure. So I go over it with a bunch of hot glue first. <laughs> and then I'm using some of that thicker twine from Walmart. And we're just going to simply wrap this. It's going to give that wrapped like jute detail here at the bottom. But it's also going to serve the purpose of holding these all down. The seahorse kind of wanted to stick out a little bit. So I did kind of glue them down the best that I could. But most of the greenery kind of stood on its own. And then I just keep wrapping this around, kind of going through the hot glue. That way it will kind of stabilize all of that, but it's also gonna look decorative down there as well. Just kind of pushing that into the hot glue until I have pretty good coverage and then gluing that to the back and trimming off the excess. And I think that was a great way to fill up the bottom of the sign. Um, definitely added to the seahorse vibe and they're very realistic little seahorses. I love these. Good job, Dollar Tree. Now, why did you not send your stores more of the shore living items? Because there's so many of my crafty beach viewers that can't find it. And it seems like, you know, they're online sold out just as fast as their stores. But this is how it turned out. This is it with it just blue and white. Now, the only thing I thought maybe the seahorse still needed was maybe a little brown because I have kind of brown in everything else. So I just used some Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush and we're gonna do a very light distress all over um, just to kind of add a little bit of age, a little bit of character to it, kind of make it match everything else. And now I think it's just about perfect. So here is my answer to that challenge, a more realistic, colorful, a seahorse DIY. And I think it turned out really fun. Hey guys, now stick around later in the video. You guys have been asking to see my coastal beach stream themed Florida room and I am gonna give you a virtual tour. So I can't wait to show you around. Okay, I told you I needed to craft more with these, right? Because I picked up way too many of these, I think. <laughs> so I'm going to use the wood one and then some of these new wood slices from Dollar Tree. I haven't used this shape. This is kind of like a wedge shape, but I thought it kind of looked like a fish scale, right? So that's what we're going to kind of go with. I want this to look like a driftwood fish. And I'm just going to use these little wood slices from the Dollar Tree to cover them. Now... Trying to figure out how to get them all to fit was a little challenging. It's like a puzzle, but like three um, arch down, three arch down, and then like kind of three triangular shaped at the top. Then I can put two on the sides and I actually had some broken pieces in mind, which was awesome because then I can use it to kind of fill up some of the gaps. But I guess if you didn't have any broken pieces, you could always cut these down if you needed to. I want to cover as much of the fish as possible to make it look like a old driftwood fish. So I think that looks good. Um, and now easy peasy, all you have to do is hot glue all of the wood slices down. The other new wood slices they have are like the long sticks. I've used those to make several DIYs. I made a really cute crab DIY out of those. You guys will have to check that out if you haven't seen it. And oh, they also have the round circular wood slices. And I used those to make a driftwood a sea turtle. So I think these are really fun to craft with. And I hope Dollar Tree keeps bringing us these like raw craft materials like this because it is so fun and thrifty. So I glued them all on. It still stands up, bonus, because that's what I wanted it to do. 
Just gonna clean up any strings of hot glue, and then we're gonna try to make it look like driftwood. I mean, you can leave it the wood that it is now, cause there is wood behind it, but I thought we could make it look old and weathered, kinda like driftwood. So first I mix ivory and antique wax together. Using a chunky brush, I just kinda blob it <laughs> all over, just pushing down, and then going over that with a baby wipe kind of pushing it down first and then kind of going back and kind of blending it around. And I also distress like any of the sign that's visible in the background too. Now I'm gonna add more antique wax to this to get a darker color. And I'm gonna go in and do the same thing just by kind of pouncing that all over. Going back, first I pounce it kind of with my baby wipe to kind of, I don't wanna wipe it all off, right? And then I go back and kind of try to blend it together. Now for the last step, I'm just gonna use the plain Antique Wax by Waverly and do the same thing to bring in some of the dark colors. And it may seem to be extra to be doing this, but I do think it really added a lot of details to this and kind of made it look more like driftwood. And I'll kind of show you the comparison before and after the distress so you can decide if you wanna do that on one of yours. And you can always do this on the white uh, fish as well, but you're probably gonna have to paint um, the fish before you add your wood slices to it. So this is what it looks like with the weathering. And this is how it looked before. So it did definitely make a difference and I'm glad that I decided to distress it. So here is our little driftwood fish. I think it turned out really cute. Um, oh, limitless places I can display this in my house. I think it looks super cute. And I did leave the rope on there because why not? I kind of had room for it. And it kind of adds another little fun layer to our little driftwood fish. Pretty cute, right? You guys know I love a good driftwood project. I think this is gonna look great. I think I'm gonna display this in my living room. Hey guys, I wanna take a quick moment out of today's video, tell you about our private Facebook group. I always have it linked below. I would love it if you would come join us over there. We have so many creative souls. And I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and Crafty Beach on YouTube it is my channel on all of those. Okay. Next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these like plain wood signs from the Dollar Tree. I love these, these things are great. Um, they're a good size and they have a frame and everything. I do want to protect the frame because I'm gonna show you guys how to do an easy ocean seam. So all I did was painters tape off all of that great wood. Now, I wanted to show you guys this because I've done this a lot. I've got a big painting of this in my living room. An ocean scene, an abstract ocean scene is like the easiest thing you can do. Don't be scared, you can totally do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of do a stripe with a curvy bottom because it's gonna be the beach, right? And this is just curvy and blue. What I did was I just picked up um, a couple colors of blue that I had just in acrylic. I think this one is lake blue. Gonna kind of do the sky in that color and just going from one side to the other. So if you can paint like a straight line across, then you can totally do your own ocean scene. So I kind of do that, you know, where a sky would be. Then I take some of that same color, mix it with the first color to create a, another type of blue. Because when you look out into the ocean, you see all different shades of blue all the way out, they kind of change sh shades. And then I have a turquoise, so let's mix some turquoise in. We'll have some tropical looking water here. And then I kind of try to like blend um, in between the two different colors. And then going back here with some more of the Caribbean blue here towards the back. Then I could just kind of start mixing and blending these. I was using the sides of my foam brush to kind of blend the different layers together. <laughs> My camera was not one to keep up with that. And then I also kind of want a very light border between the sky and the ocean, but again, it's abstract, so um, doesn't have to be perfect. But look at that, we have the ocean water all painted. See how easy that was? Now it's time for the sand. I picked up this color at Target the other day. It's a little darker, it's like a teddy bear color is what it's called. It's a little darker for sand, but 
I do go ahead and put one coat of that down. And then I was like, this is too dark for sand. So um, while it's still wet, I'm gonna go in and fix that by adding some ivory paint to it. While it's still wet, I thought we could just, you know, blend that together and it's gonna give like a variation of tans and make it kind of look cool and distressed. So that's what I did. Just blended some ivory right on top of it and gave that a nice dry. Now for sea foam, I just used ivory in the tip of my foam brush, just kind of pouncing down and um, kind of pushing it down, kind of blending it a little bit with a baby wipe as well. The sea foam part can be a little hard, but I don't want it to be real obvious, but I want there to be definitely some sea foam on there. Just a little something in between the blue water and the beach. Now we have the perfect background to make a sign. So I'm just going to pull off my painter's tape. It was Dollar Tree painter's tape, and you know what? It didn't do too bad of a job. I'm also gonna remove the hanger on this side just because I wanna remove it so I, um, I wanna make sure that it is going to hang properly, and I thought that might get in the way. Now, y'all, I cut this design out so many times. Um, I was completely out of white vinyl and did not know. So I was like, oh, I'll make a stencil. I was completely out of stencil vinyl too. So I had to go on my own <laughs> Amazon shop and order supplies, but I was halfway in between this project. And so I decided to use white cardstock on my Cricut to cut this out. But I do have this cut file for y'all and for Cricut, and I will share that in the description below. Um, so, <sighs> You don't have to do it this way with cardstock. Do it with white vinyl. That's what I was planning on doing. The only white vinyl I had was the Dollar Tree white vinyl. And y'all know, not a fan. First of all, it like totally messed up my mat because the back sticks, right? But the first time it came apart before it even came off the Cricut. The second time uh, I tried to weed it and it all fell apart again. The third, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was so frustrated. <laughs> And so cardstock it is. We're going to make it work, huh? I just put down Mod Podge. I am peeling off the cardstock and sticking it to the Mod Podge. So I guess this is an example of what you can do when you're out of a vinyl and you're out of stencil vinyl as well. I can't believe it. Usually I'm better about ordering things when I run out of them, but don't worry, I have got them ordered now and I always have my favorites in the description below. You can get some big rolls of vinyl on Amazon and they work so much better than the Dollar Tree vinyl. I like using that for DIYs, but I do not like using it for my Cricut. Now the starfish had way too intricate of a pattern and this is me trying to pop out all of the holes. I was not a fan and I don't want you to have to do that when you're weeding your vinyl. So I did change the cut file and I took out all of those cutouts on the starfish so that you won't have to do that part. But I just keep mod podging this all down. Also the eye for calling. And now our great little beach sign says the beach is calling. Just trying to push down all of the cardstock into the Mod Podge. I want to make sure none of it's up because I want it to stay attached and be part of the sign. And you know, I didn't want to use cardstock, but it actually turned out really good in the end because it was kind of matte. And then that kind of reminded me when I was ordering new white vinyl, instead of ordering the glossy white vinyl that I always get um, that's in my Amazon shop, they also have a white matte. Um, finish and so that's what I ordered this time and I also added that to my shop for y'all if you guys want to check that out. So I go over the whole thing with a nice coat of Mod Podge and give it a dry. Isn't it cute? I love the sign. Now I thought we can make the frame look a little bit more like driftwood. It's a little dark for my decor. So I'm going to go back in with that like teddy bear brown color, do a very light distress, leaving the wood that's on there of course. And then I'm gonna add some ivory to that to make a lighter color. And maybe a little antique wax by Waverly because that always gives me the greatest, perfect driftwood color. And then distress lightly. And I'm only doing the front of the frame where it's kind of a visible. Then I'm gonna go back and kind of blend that a little bit. But this DIY is complete. I think it's really cute, even though my Cricut 
made me hate it for a minute. It did a good job of cutting out the cardstock, so I'll be appreciative of that. And it's not the Cricut's fault that I forgot to order supplies, but don't use Dollar Tree vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the beach is calling. I mean, the beach is always calling, right? And this is how it turned out. As you can see, that Mod Podge gives it kind of like a painting feel. And you get a very slight raised edge for all of the cardstock, which you kind of get the same exact thing with some vinyl. And then I put that little starfish down there at the bottom to be in the sand. And I think it turned out pretty cute, even though this project made me almost throw in the towel. <laughs> okay, next DIY. I'm gonna use one of these Relax Shell signs from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. Um, you could always use the raw wood one too. Um, it would be a little bit smaller though. And I can't even begin to get that metal relax off the back. So this is going to be a two-sided sign. We're going to leave that back there. <laughs> now, I want this to be an ivory sign. And we're going over that brown backer board that's on the sign. And I'm only using ivory acrylic. So it's going to take two or three coats, I think three, um, to cover that up. But if you're using like an ivory chalk paint, it might only take you one. And you don't have to have a shell for this DIY. Any kind of Dollar Tree sign would work. But since I had a shell, I thought that would be fun if it was shaped like a shell. But we're going to do a fun, like, little beach van sign. Um, I had this fun idea, and I'm going to share um, the printable file for you um, so that you can recreate this at home. Okay, I finally got it looking pretty good with three coats of ivory on there. Now I'm gonna drag Antique Wax by Waverly and kind of draw that shape of a shell back on, working all of my lines straight into the middle and then going back and kind of blending it all together with a baby wipe. I kind of want this to look like a realistic, like white, tan, brown, um, just simple seashell from the beach. I go back with ivory and do the lines again just because I didn't want it to be a brown shell. I wanted to brighten it up a little bit. But still leaving all of the, like, you know, the different colors that you would see in the grooves of a shell. And I think it totally kind of gives you that effect. I kind of, kind of go back and forth between the Antique Wax by Waverly and the Ivory. And you can always do that with the distressing. If you um, find that you went too hard on the distressing, you can always go back with the original color and add some of that. Now here is the adorable little beach bus watercolor that I'll share with you in the description below. I printed mine out on cardstock. That way you wouldn't be able to see any kind of images under it. And we're just going to go in with scissors and cut it. I decided to cut off that cute little beach rack on the top just because it had a white background. And I thought that might make it not blend in with the sign as well. But it's totally up to you what you want to do. And then I go around to the bottom, cut this out. And then on the surfboards, there is like a little fin sticking out of one of the surfboards just to make it easier to attach. I just went ahead and trimmed that off too. I didn't think it was completely necessary for the image. And now we have our little beach fan with surfboards. There's a couple of people in, in town that have one of these like classic Volkswagen beach buses in that blue color. And I'm always drooling over them because I think that'd be such a fun vehicle to have. Not practical at all. No, no, but fun, right? So we're going to Mod Podge this on, but I wasn't too happy with the white in that and the fact that I had no white on my shell. So I do go back in with just some straight white acrylic and bring a distressed shell, kind of making those ivory um, lines in the shell more white. That way the background and the you know van will kind of match a little bit, if you know what I mean. I wanted to bring out that white. And I had no white in the original sign. I think that looks better. Now for the words on the bottom, I'm just going to use one of these Target paint pens and try to do like that Ray Dunn skinny font. It's a pretty easy font to do. I start in the middle so I can make sure that it is centered and just do my Ray Dunn, the skinny font. If you study it, it's pretty easy to do. It's easier than breaking out your Cricut. And I'm going to have this sign say Beach Bound. And then I'm going to kind of go over it again. And I have like this great like turquoise color. I think this is going to match well. 
with the fun image that we have on there. So that's why I was saying you don't have to do this DIY on a shell. This will be really cute on a circle shape or like a square or rectangle shape from the Dollar Tree as well. Quick and easy, print this out on your printer on some cardstock, cut it out and you are ready to go. And you can always use your Cricut if you don't want to do your own lettering. But you know, with Coastal Farmhouse, you always want to distress it so it doesn't have to be perfect. And mine is definitely not perfect. But then I go over it with a little ivory distress and you'll never know, right? Just a very light dry brush all over that just to kind of cure any imperfections. But I don't want to um, kind of dull that blue too much. Now it's time to add our little beach fan on here, a little beach bus. So I do a layer of Mod Podge, thick enough to hold down that cardstock, and then just press our image onto our little shell sign. Making sure that my fingers are dry, I'm trying to keep that flattened. And I really like to Mod Podge cardstock. I always pick up like the plain white cardstock at Target. Um, it's great for crafting with. Um, you don't have to worry about it tearing. You don't have to worry about like the images showing through when you Mod Podge with it. And now I'm going to go over the entire sign with Mod Podge because um, I want it all to be the same finish, the same matte finish. And I always use that matte Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree. I kind of wanted to make sure I didn't have any pools of Mod Podge and then I let that dry. And now it's time just to make a hanger for this sign. I use a little bit of that Dollar Tree twine coming in from the back, knotting it in the front. And I'm also going to frame this out. You could kind of leave this as is, but I thought some of that like thinner brown Dollar Tree rope would make a great border and frame for this and really kind of tie it all together. And I had a scrap uh, piece of this rope sitting right here. So why not, right? And so we're just going to hot glue this. I'm going to start down here just on the corner. I love that hot glue gun. I always have that listed in my shop below. The only thing I don't love about it is that it does give you a lot of hot glue. And I didn't really have my fine tip um, hot glue gun like heated up and ready to go. So I'm trying to be really careful by only doing a little bit of hot glue and working one section at a time because I don't want it to dry before I get it all on there. And the shell has this like undulated, you know, design all the way around. And I really want the um, rope to kind of go in each one of those little grooves. So I kind of take my time when going around that, pushing that into the groove so that I'll still kind of have like a curvy outline on the shell. And I'm really glad that I decided to add the rope to it because I think it really did bring a lot to this DIY. This DIY is so fun. I think I might add this to my Florida room just because it totally has that Florida room vibe that I've been looking for. And I don't forget, I'm going to show you my Florida room here in just a little bit. Um, a lot of fun DIYs out there. Um, my husband and I have put together Together, kind of a DIY Florida room because uh, we didn't have a lot of money to buy stuff. So I'll show you how we created a wonderful Florida room anyway. So um, almost done. Just got to finish off the bottom here. Um, the corner of the shell is going to be a perfect place for the transition between the two pieces of rope. Just kind of have to trim that down to size. And I always like to trim that as good as I can. Add some hot glue. Kind of let that cool off a little bit. And then when you go back, you can kind of mold that together and make it look a little tidier. Now, what do you guys think about this sign? I had the, a vision of this sign in my head and I think it turned out really cute. I do go around the back, add some more hot glue just to make sure that my rope stays on there since I might use this one outdoors. And my Florida room is mostly covered. Sometimes it rains sideways in Florida, you know. But I think it might hold up out there. And this is how it turned out. Our little beach bound bus. I think it's really creative and fun. And how cute is that image? I love it. And I need one of those little beach buses. 
<laughs> I saw a really long one the other day. I didn't even know they made those. We have a, a famous country music singer that is from our town, Vero Beach, and he did a music video here in Vero, and he had one of those little blue buses in his video, and he bought it. It was his. I was so jealous. Okay, next DIY is we're going to try to make some beach houses. My next two DIYs, I guess. I wanted to kind of see, compare the difference between these newer houses they have at the Dollar Tree and the older kind. So the newer ones are thinner. The wood is cleaner than these. These are the chunky ones that they've always had, like at the Crafter Square. They're real thick. They're just like wood, right? Now, mine had paint or something on the back of it. So I'm just going to go in with ivory and do like the back and the sides of both of our houses. Um, just to clean that up, but you know, totally optional. These are going to be pieces that like sit around my house. These would also be great for a tear tray. Um, so I kind of wanted them to have a finished back anyway, so that's fine. And then we're going to stain the other side. I found these great like beach stencils at Dollar Tree. They don't say Crafter Square, but they were, or they, they say Crafter Square. They don't say Shore Living, but... My store had them with the Shore Living stuff, but I have also found them in the Crafter Square as well. But they have some cute beach images on them besides the letters. So I'm gonna use a little Goo Gone because this new one had a tag on it. And these were completely different to DIY. So I'll kind of show you the difference. I wanna stain them like different colors of blue to make little beach houses. So I used Caribbean blue on this one, follow that up with a baby wipe and it's stained beautifully. I added some turquoise to that color so we can have another like custom color of blue that would be complimentary and went over this one. Now this one, the like thicker one from the Crafter Square did not stain great. It stained, didn't stain great. It's got like a rough bumpy texture that's almost like, I don't know if you can see that, but almost like a fabric te texture on it. I don't know why, it's kind of odd, but we're going to make it work. Now, this is the stencil I was talking about. It's lettering, but the bottom of it are great little beach shapes. So I thought we would use this to make some super easy little beach houses. Now, um, on my smaller one, I thought I would use the seahorse because it's so cute and it's small. So I think that's going to look really good on this smaller house. I'm going to use some of these little stencil daubers from the Dollar Tree and just some white acrylic simply holding that on there and kind of pouncing all over. I was really impressed with these stencils, probably some of the best stencils from the Dollar Tree that I've ever tried because it's a really nice thick material. And I just go over that with a baby wipe and look how easily that stencil cleaned up so that I can reuse it. Love it. And the little seahorse turned out cute too. Now for the larger sign, I thought we would do the seashell at the top of this one. Now, make sure you line yours up properly. I think I got mine a little bit crooked. <laughs> but I use that same little stencil pounce, pouncer and go all over with some white acrylic on that. It's got lots of like the little stripes of the shell. So make sure you don't go side to side. You just want to go up and down. And then lettering time. I like to use this Posca white paint pen. I forgot to add this to my shop. So I just added these to my Amazon shop. I love them. It's a nice fine tip white paint pen. Works great for the skinny font that I love in my DIY. So this one, we're just going to say relax. And I'm going to kind of touch up my shell too to make it look like it's centered, right? <laughs> and then I'm going to go over it with another coat to make sure that that white is going to stick out from that blue color behind it. And just kind of hand paint those. I think I'm getting pretty good at the skin, the skinny Ray Dunn font. I used to kind of have a Ray Dunn addiction. Now I try to stay out of TJ Maxx and Marshalls. It's way easier on my pocketbook because I can just make my own Ray Dunn stuff, right? <laughs> so the seahorse one, I just wrote sand on. Same white paint pen, same kind of font. Now I wanted to do like a driftwood roof and I usually use like these smaller pieces from Target, the driftwood filler. 
they weren't quite long enough to do a roof. And so I did have some driftwood. I ordered this on Amazon. I have this linked in my shop below as well. And those two pieces look great for a roof for our larger house, like relax. Putting the two together like that, I think those two are gonna be perfect. So all you gotta do is hot glue that on the top of your house and you're gonna have a fun little driftwood house to your little beach house. I was gonna leave them without a roof at first. I'm so glad that I came up with this idea because it really made them look beachy. So I just hot glue each one of those to the top. They're perfect. And then, you know, I was trying to decide what to do with my smaller one. I guess you could use that driftwood filler from the Dollar Tree and kind of piece it together if you wanted to. Um, I actually had real driftwood from the beach too. So I had a couple pieces um, that are just about the right side size, kind of gnarly. I found one and then it was just a matter of finding one for the other side. And I think those look even cooler because it's like real driftwood. So they're real messed up and gnarly. And I just hot glue those on. So, you know, they're kind of the same. They're kind of different. The two little beach houses we made with these supplies from the Dollar Tree. Um, I like the size, the small one but I liked working with the newer ones, the thinner, more polished wood. I think it's stained better, but this is how they turned out. I've also got a wider house too, that's a little bit shorter. They have so many things to choose from now. So this is the larger one. You can see how that blue stain looked looks really cool. There was some kind of natural, I think, yellow already in that kind of still kind of shines through, but I kind of like that. And we stenciled the little seashell on the front. And then here is the smaller one. Now you can see that texture that I was talking about. And you can really see on the seahorse, see that texture? It must be how they cut these or process them. But I kind of like it. And I really love the driftwood roof on top. <laughs> it looks like there was even a couple little pieces of sand still on it. So here is our little relax house and our sand house. Okay, this DIY is really easy and fun. We're gonna use one of these round signs from the Dollar Tree, aren't they adorable? And one of their new tablecloths. They have these in the summer section at my Dollar Trees in with like all of the plastic summer dinnerware tablecloths and stuff like that. And I saw that it had sea turtles on it. So I said, ooh, I bet I can make something out of it. Now it's made out of plastic, but it also um, has like a light flannel backing, but it is still really thin because it is from the Dollar Tree. I was kind of scared that using heat on it um, was gonna be a problem, but actually I had no problem working with this whatsoever. And this little turtle right here is gonna be the perfect size to fit on this little sign. So this is an idea for a coastal beach DIY. If you were out of your shore living items or you were not fast enough to snag any, or if your Dollar Tree just did not want you to have any, um, I'm gonna simply cut this out first, and then we can cut out our little sea turtle. Now, I would almost say that the sea turtle was too easy to cut out because it was so thin. So be careful with that. Now I wanna prepare our sign. So I'm gonna mix together ivory and Caribbean blue to get a nice soft light blue. I want this to look like the little sea turtle is swimming in the ocean. So I go all over the inside, right up against the edges of the inside of the frame and cover all of the back of it. Now it has like the wood slats. And so I did go back with a brush and kind of get the paint in between them because of course it's gonna kind of drip back there. And I think it would look better if it was all just painted blue. So um, a nice coat of that all over. Then I'm gonna use straight Caribbean blue, which is without the ivory added to kind of give me a different shade of blue and a makeup sponge. And we're just gonna simply paint the frame, another color of ocean blue. And we're gonna do a couple techniques to that to kind of make it look kind of like an underwater, kind of abstract underwater scene for our little sea turtle. 
but I want to make sure that most of like the wood is covered and none of that is really shining through. Now, like I kind of wanted to do like little variations of white, kind of like wave them all around like that. Um, and then I'll go back with a baby wipe and kind of blend that in. I do go back and add some like of the darker like Caribbean blue to it later to kind of make it look splotchy because when you see like an underwater scene usually it's not like pool water blue right there's like different variations in it as well now I told you that the sea turtle was too easy to cut out the reason I said that is because it is paper thin so take it slow when you're cutting it out because you will definitely cut off a part of the sea turtle and then you'll be sad. But think about how big that tablecloth is and how many DIYs I can make with it. <laughs> it had sea turtles and coral all over it and I can't wait to DIY with it. I'm glad I picked it up. I was a little scared of the plastic at first, but it was way sturdier than expected. Now, the back fins had like a slight outline of yellow on them. I leave it on at first because I wasn't sure if that would kind of add to like the 3D effect of it. But once I got it all cut out, I wasn't a big fan of it. So I kind of went back and trimmed that up a little bit, kind of cut the yellow parts off. I thought it might be a little bit distracting. And there's our little sea turtle. Isn't he just the perfect size for this little sign? And the colors on him are so pretty. So we're going to simply, you know, Mod Podge this on with some matte Mod Podge. You guys know I love some Mod Podge. I'm going to do a thin coat because it's definitely a thin thing that we're attaching. And I think that that's, that flannel backing on the back kind of will help give me something to glue this plastic to and keep it nice and smooth. So I just kind of push the sea turtle down into the Mod Podge, and then we're gonna Mod Podge over the top of him as well. Trying to be careful, make sure all of the little sea turtle flippers are glued down and nice and secure. And going over the rest of the sign too, cause I don't wanna change like the glossiness finish. I want it to be uniform all the way across. Now, once I dried this, I kind of thought about going in and kind of cutting it um, like the boards are on there, if you know what I mean, with like an X-Acto knife. But since this was so thin, I thought I could probably really mess the whole project up. So I just sealed it with another coat of Mod Podge and gave it a good dry. He's looking really cute. Now, sometimes I like these hangers, sometimes I don't. For this one, I just want it to be a simple round sign. So I just take the wood bead hanger off. And then I always save those little sawtooth hangers from the Dollar Tree canvases because I love to reuse them and this is no different. I'm just gonna use a hammer to hammer that into the back to make a simple hanger. He's looking pretty cute so far, isn't he? I am digging him because you know I love sea turtles. I'm gonna use that Posca white paint pen again and we're gonna dry some really small little bubbles kind of like coming up out of the water from his mouth. Just to add, a, you know, just a kind of a fun detail to the sign. And then using a stencil dauber and some of that Caribbean blue, we're gonna make some blue spots in the water and then kind of go back and kind of blend that in with the baby white. Cause again, I want it to look underwater and um, the water is not going to be like all different, you know, one color of blue. And I think that looks really cute. I think he's really sweet. What do you guys think about our little sea turtle DIY using a sign from the Dollar Tree and a Dollar Tree tablecloth? Look how cute he is. The colors in his shell look so realistic. I love it. And I like the fact that we kind of made it look like he was swimming in the ocean as well. Even though he's pretty cute. I think he might look good like on a wood background too, but this is how he turned out. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you that I've introduced memberships on my channel for $4.99 a month. You can help support me here at Crafty Beach. You're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos and other perks like shout outs. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to the following Crafty Beach Bum members. Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, 
Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, and Stacy Gravett. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate you all. And now it's time for my Florida room virtual tour. You guys have heard me talk about my Florida room. I've had many of you guys calling me out saying, Florida room, Florida room. And I meant to do it in my last video, totally forgot. Having all this company with graduation, all that craziness over, I finally remembered. So let's take a tour of my Florida room. I'm gonna give you a quick tour here first. And then I will go in and kind of describe some of my pieces. So this is one side of my Florida room. I use this side for dining, of course. And I have a story behind that table and chairs. You'll recognize these DIYs as I've just done them recently in YouTube videos. Oh, can't wait to tell you about that fantastic light fixture. And that whale was not a DIY. I actually got that at, I think, TJ Maxx or Marshalls. Those are all of the wind chimes that we created. Now, this side of my Florida room has my favorite, my son's favorite too, the hot tub with a television, of course, which you need in Florida. This is my favorite room in my house. My husband built this great sectional and uh, this great table for our Florida room. And he used plans to make that furniture from, I think, Anna White. Um, she does some great DIYs to make your own furniture, but this is kind of what it looks from like from over here. It is a large Florida room. Now the table was actually a used table that we bought off Craigslist when we first moved to Florida. It wouldn't fit in our new house. So what I did was painted it ivory. I used like a countertop surface to cover the top to make it durable to be outside. And then I reupholstered all of the chairs with like a turquoise vinyl that I got on Amazon which after all these years has held up well. Some of the seats, depending on where the seats are stored, have cracked a little bit. So I might have to kind of, you know, um, reupholster some of the seats maybe, but they've held up pretty good. For the table, I just have Shore Living um, placemats. I couldn't get six of them all the same, so I kind of varied um, two different ones on the end to finish that out. You'll recognize a lot of DIYs out here, including these are all DIYs that I've done recently on my channel. If you've missed any of these lovely DIYs, you'll have to go back and see if you can find them. I think they're so fun. I had to screw these into my walls because hurricane season, don't want them blown away and I don't want them um, you know, falling off every time we have a storm. Now, the hot tub is just a Coleman inflatable hot tub that we got on Amazon. They're very inexpensive and we love it. 104 degrees, so it's perfect in the night. Um, just had to replace that television set because I did not have a surge protector on it and we had a bad storm recently. Here is some more DIYs and our TV. Um, I don't know if we really get a good view of it, but we also have a pull down movie screen up there on the top there. You can kind of see it that we can pull down and project movies and kind of have like a movie theater experience outside. Now, this is the couch, the sectional couch that my husband built just out of lumber. I painted it ivory. We found these cushions on Facebook Marketplace um, for like $20 for all these cushions. Somebody was getting new cushions for their couch and just sold them on Marketplace. You could never know what you're gonna find on Facebook Marketplace. The like palm leaf um, covers for all the cushions, I got those on Amazon. I'll be sure to link those in my Amazon shop below. My husband also built me this table. I don't know if he had any plans for this, but basically he made like the little insets there for me to put my beautiful seashell collection from uh, trolling the beaches. I got a lot of my starfish over in Sanibel, but I got really some cool stuff in here. And what he did was just have like a piece of plexiglass cut down for the top. It's held up really well. It has like four legs on it and it makes a really good coffee table because it's also a decorative. And I'm a big fan of these cushion covers. These are new. Um, I've added these to my cushions and I love the tropical feel. 
So this is kind of how my Florida room looks from this side. Half of it's dining, half of it's like living. Definitely my favorite place to be in our whole home. I absolutely love it. It was one of the reasons why I wanted to live in this house. And you'll recognize some of these wind chimes. I guess all but one. One of those is a, oh, you look, some lizards make some appearance. I swear these little lizards think that this is their room and that I made this all for them. <laughs> but one of those wind chimes is from a good friend, Lorray, but I DIY'd all the other ones because she has way more wind chimes than me and I was jealous. Now this beautiful driftwood light fixture, one of a kind, my darling husband found this driftwood on the beach and lugged this enormous piece of driftwood home with the idea that he would make me a light fixture. He is an electrician and so he wired all of this, got these like, I think they're called Edison bulb lights strung that through the driftwood and hooked them up to like a dimmer light and everything. We already have like ceiling fans out there, but this lighting fixture just goes above the dining table and I love it. Now the rug I got at Ross, Dress for Less, I got two of them. One goes under my table, one in my living room. I also got a smaller one for the doorway. They are a great place to get cheap Cham cheap rugs that hold up well outdoors. The whale, I love it. I can't claim that I designed that because I totally bought that one. But I think Marshall's, I think Marshall's is where I found that guy. And he's just the right size for that giant table. It fits all of our guests when we're outside. Oh, the curtains. I forgot to talk about the curtains. I bought these on Amazon. I got enough for kind of every wall of the room. And then we just took cheap metal piping from the hardware store and hooks for curtain rods from Amazon as well. And we went all the way around the entire Florida room with those so that we could hang curtains. And it provides privacy and I think they're really fun too. So I hope you guys enjoyed your tour of my Florida room. Thanks for coming over to visit. <laughs> okay, it is now time for the final reveal for all of the crafts that we made today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Um, comment your favorite DIY below. Um, you can also tell me if you enjoyed any of my husband's wonderful DIYs and mine, I guess, at In The Florida Room. And don't forget to subscribe. We just hit 18,000 subscribers today. So thank you so much. We are growing and I can't wait to get to 20K. Now on this boat and we all know
thanks again for watching and if you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here.